How's it going everyone? It's David here and believe it or not I have returned here to Kennywood Park. Uh, as everyone is aware there was a shooting a couple weeks ago at this park. I have nothing more to add to that discussion. I held it off a little bit when the heat for the heat to kind of die down but I still really wanted to come out to Kennywood and see what they do for Phantom Fall Fest, their annual seasonal event, uh, which I really enjoy. This is one of my favorite times of year at any amusement park, Kennywood included. One of the better ones, honestly, that I have been to. I know coming here into the event, uh, they have a brand new haunted house, Malice in Wonderland. Definitely want to check that out. And also see all the seasonal offerings that this event has to offer. And uh, yeah, it's been a while since I've been here at this park, uh, but we are going to go in and still gonna try to have some fun. So Kennywood has had a lot of negative press lately, and I wanna go in and definitely look at all the positives. I hope all the people who come out to the park today are gonna have the time of their life. That's what Kennywood's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a very fun, family-friendly place. Getting into the park, though, a little bit different. Um, Security is a lot tighter. It took longer to get in. And there was a lot of people getting stopped by a brand new bag policy. And the bag, it's pretty much no bigger than the size of a large wallet. So take that in mind. Chaperone policies into effect. No one, I believe under the age of uh, 17 or 18, can't go in without a supervising adult at all times. Uh, and there is no re-entry after six o'clock. So, there's the precautions in. So far, it seems pretty uh, well secure. And uh, yeah, let's try to have a good evening. As expected, there is a speedy pass for the haunted houses. Um, it's going to be a virtual queue setup again, like what they did with the rides this past summer. For as uncrowded as Kennywood seems to be, Steel Curtain still has an advertised one hour wait. Similar to the Thunderbolt last year, the racer is closed early for the season, for it will be receiving a lot of new track work and a fresh coat of paint.
it looks like they're doing some major work on the Raging Rapids. This ride did not open this year, but uh, hopefully it will for the 2023 season. station and they will find a partner for you. Hats, glasses, keys, and phones, as well as any other loose items, will get lost while on the Thunderbolt. Kennywood is not responsible for any items left while riding. in the dark has returned this year as an upcharge for $9.99. But as of right now in the daytime, it looks like Noah's Ark is actually closed. So the old gift shop here in Kennyville has now been converted into an arcade. And there is a rumor that these arcade games will not be returning to the Penny Arcade located next to the Jackrabbit. That may not be coming back for next season, but we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> the Mortem Manor estate sale was only a uh, one year scare zone. And now we have the Deadlight District next to the Parkside Cafe. It looks like a city alley. We'll definitely be checking this out later tonight when we have some scare actors. Well, it looks like we have construction going on at the old volcano site. There's a whole bunch of warning signs about aliens and extraterrestrial activity and an impact zone. This is definitely hinting at a new attraction. What it will be, I do not know. Probably some flat ride of sort. I can report though that the volcano facade that's beyond these walls have been removed. And if you scan the barcode over here, you'll be taken to an image of a satellite aerial view of the old volcano plot of land. So, who knows what is going on back here, but if it's a new ride for 2023, definitely excited for it. Cosmic Chaos supports are now green, at least they're in the process of painting them green. So this looks like it's getting a paint job. And of course this is right across from where the new attraction may be. And you have the UFO shaped gift shop. So you're going to have a nice little alien themed corner section of the park.
I don't know how long this has been here, but there is a new metal gate and asphalt path going into the Phantom's infield right underneath the first drop. Again, I don't know how long this has been here. Just did a brisk back row ride on the Phantom's Revenge. I love feeling that cold air going down. Very wild back there. Phantom, great as always. I will say, it's telling me how long it's been since I've done this. That was the first time I actually did the Phantom with the new Q setup, or at least waiting in the new Q setup. They only let so many people go up on the bridge and into the station. I felt like that really slowed down the process. And with the fact they were only running one train, wait a lot longer than I usually would for the Phantom. Still a really good ride, but uh, yeah, and they were also letting a lot of Speedy Pass go into, and it's still really pricey as of now. is actually open in the fall. Is that good? The Midway Games in Steelers Country has been replaced with Hunt's Bar. It's a football themed uh, bar and hangout spot. Although right now they have a couple things for Malice and Wonderland, which we're getting in line for right now. You have to get into two separate lines. One to buy your ticket, since this is an upcharge attraction, and then another one over there for the actual haunt itself. Tonight, though, season pass holders should be able to get in for free. did the all-new haunt, Malice in Wonderland. First off, just gonna give a condition that did happen to us. We ended up waiting two hours for that haunted house. The whole setup with that, I'm not gonna lie, was pretty bad. You had to wait in a separate line to buy your tickets or redeem them if you had a season pass, and then you had to get into a second line, and the line for the house was so slow. I wouldn't have done it, honestly, if I knew the line was that long. Um, and there was a lot of people with the Speedy Pass, the $140 Speedy Pass, that were just going right in and really slowing down the line. 
The reason I say this is because going into the haunted house, I actually thought it was pretty well done. Um, some pretty cool sets, and the actors, fantastic. Oh man, they were really, really good. And there were some really good uh, special effects in there as well, uh, some cool illusions along with it. There's actually an interactive element to it where you have to help Alice find the white rabbit. You could either go into the rabbit hole or go through the looking glass. They split up the group. Uh, we went into the looking glass, and there was a, a pretty cool effect where uh, the windows were banging against the wall, and some of them there were some actors jumping out of it. Um, again though, the lengthwise was about the same as any other average haunted house here. It took like five, six, seven minutes long. Um, again, I did like it, but didn't love it and the two hour line definitely didn't help. So make sure that if you really want to do this, uh, come here on a slow night or uh, just be prepared to wait in a very, very long line. I also feel that doing $15 just for one haunted house uh, by itself, it's not really worth it, especially after you pay your admission price for all the other haunted houses are included. Oh, the Ark in the Dark, yeah, is also $10. So um, a lot of upcharges here this year, so pretty disappointed in that. Uh, still liked it, still do it if it's not long, but yeah, definitely not worth it. I don't think any house is worth a two hour wait. This is the first time I'm actually seeing the new light package for the kangaroo, and it looks fantastic. Oh my god. Talk about a bladder. Oh. Oh. That was like, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this dude. 
Dead Lake District. It feels like a mini gory park. It's pretty cool. For the first time in a very long while, the turtle is open at night during Phantom Fright Nights, or I should say Phantom Fall Fest. Oh my god, it's the scariest monster of them all. Take your mask 57. off. My mask off? Yeah. I always look this terrible. You should know that. You'll be in the next group. As the dark, shadowy figure approaches, my nerves are now trembling. Are you going to film this entire thing? Actually, feel free. Free content. Welcome everyone to the Hill Cemetery. My name is Garrett. I'm a caretaker around here. I've got a small problem as of reason. It has nothing to do with my lack of care, per se, as a caretaker. There is no more room in hell. The dead are now walking the earth. Each and every one of you make perfectly good food for the dead. And if you'd like to make it out of your life tonight, and hopefully in one piece, I suggest you follow our path and our rules. There will be no eating. No drinking, no smoking, no cell phones of any kind in front of the cemetery. We ask that you do not touch the dead, and they will not touch you. The path which you must follow to make it out of your life tonight is concrete, mulch, concrete, mulch. I say concrete, you say mulch. Concrete, mulch. concrete, mulch. I commune to people. Concrete, mulch. concrete, mulch. I know you're all dying to get in, so please. Make like a tree and leaf and enjoy your stay inside of the Kettleville Cemetery where bodies enter but never leave. We have plenty of room for everyone to be under. Plenty of room. Enjoy your stay with us for the eternity inside of Kettleville Cemetery. All right, just did a run through of the Kennyville Cemetery. That was fantastic this year. Uh, there was a lot of actors in there and they brought a lot of personality to it. Um, it even had a, a comedic edge to it. Uh, my favorite guy ever had a flashlight that held up a friendly looking sign that said, Spooky. And that was the scare. And he kept doing it over and over again. And it just brought a whole level of humor to it. But there were some legitimate scares. There was a guy uh, with a leaf cutter trying to get me almost for the entire maze. And uh, there was one guy who came out, some sort of creature on the shore, I don't know what it was. He definitely got me going through the mausoleum. Uh, they do a really good job here. This is a personal favorite of mine. It helps that I do have a good friend who uh, works in this uh, maze. So a really good one, and I think a better bargain than the two hour wait I did earlier. I only waited about 15 minutes for this one. <laughs> Literally an actor in a tree.
as you can see along the entire perimeter fence there are bright floodlights and police cars there's definitely uh, a heavier security presence all throughout the park and I will say I did feel more comfortable tonight and that's gonna do it here from Kennywood Phantom Fall Fest um, I will say here's my opinions uh, on my day uh, I felt pretty secure walking around the park I didn't really see uh, any rowdy behavior or any mischievous activity which is very good but they are very very tight on the security here now it is a necessary measure though and I think it's uh, greatly appreciated um, into the park uh, here throughout the day um, I felt like the daytime portion of Phantom Fall Fest was uh, a big letdown. Not too many decorations, not too much atmosphere, not even like uh, themed music or anything for the kids and the families. Uh, Idlewild does a much better job at that over at Halibu. Uh But the park does completely transform back into the old Phantom Fright Nights at 6 o'clock and that is where the atmosphere really shines. Uh, they do a really good job. It's just simple things too, like fog and lighting can really make a difference walking around the park. Um, Earlier, I said that this park was not busy. It definitely got busier, not long after I said that. Um, the haunted house lines, most of them were very, very long. Unfortunately, when we did Malice and Wonderland, that did take up a good portion of the evening. So we did not do all the haunted houses. In fact, we only did two. We did that and the cemetery. Um, so that portion of the night, um, I don't know, I was feeling a little bitter at that moment. I wasn't sure if this was all worth it, if I was even having fun. <laughs> but then after Malice, uh, we made up for it. We got some night rides on like the Turtle and the Thunderbolt. We did uh, Kennyville Cemetery, uh, went into some of the scare zones. That was all good fun and it definitely made up for it. Uh, I do plan on returning to Kennywood for Phantom Fall Fest again uh, very soon. I hope to do more of the haunted houses and more of the experiences that they have to offer. And uh, I hope to make a video for that uh, when I do that. But uh, if you guys made it here so far, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like it and subscribe for more content. And with that being said, thank you all for riding. And I'll see you next time.